Hi, and welcome back. So previously we talked about evolution. We said that population is the smallest biological unit that can evolve. Individual organisms do not change, populations do. So when we say evolution, that means we're talking about the changes in the genetic composition in the population. And there are certain forces that derive evolution. Examples would be natural selection, artificial selection, sexual selection, gene flow, migration, and also random events such as genetic drift, for example, bottleneck effect and founder effect. So all of these mechanisms will cause the genetic makeup to change within the population over time. And that's what we describe as evolution. So now we want to describe the situation when evolution is not happening. Is there such a time? We have Hardy and Weinberg. They presented us with this equation that describes populations that are not evolving. That means the allele and genotype frequencies do not change across the generations. Given this, we have to meet five conditions in order for this to happen. So we have to have random mating. Population must be large, so that means no genetic drift can occur. No gene flow can happen, no mutations can occur, and no natural selection. So when these conditions are met, we say population is not evolving, it has reached genetic equilibrium. So this equation presented by Hardy and Weinberg will serve as a null hypothesis, sort of like a basis for comparison. So that way we can see the genotypic frequencies and allele frequencies within the population when the population is not evolving. And then we can compare these numbers with what we actually observe within the population. And then we can draw the conclusion and see if we do notice a change or not. All right, so let's take a look at the allele frequencies and genotype frequencies. So those two concepts are going to be very important here as far as understanding the changes that happen within the population. So an allele is a version of a gene. And if we're looking at single gene traits, basically we have a dominant allele. We're going to represent that with big A and the recessive allele. So in this case, we are going to use letter P to represent a dominant allele frequency and a Q to represent frequency of the recessive allele. And you can see in the gene pool, this is all we have, just big A's and little a's. So that represents the entire population. So we adding those frequencies, we're going to get a one. And side note right here, if you know your P, you can always find your Q. If you have your Q, you can always find your P. So this will come in particularly handy later when we um, explore some of the problems. So how do we find the allele frequencies? You're going to take a number of copies of a particular allele in the population and divide by the total number of alleles you have, and you're going to get your frequency. Now, the genotypes are made up of two alleles because remember a genotype um, it describes a diploid organism so one allele came from mom originally and the other allele came from dad so it means those two have fused during the process of fertilization and now we have possibilities for three different genotypes we have big a big a big a little a little a little a so Big A, big A, homozygous dominant, is going to be represented by P square. Heterozygous, 2PQ, homozygous recessive, Q square. And you can see this represented in the following equation. And since these are the frequencies, they all are going to add up to 1 as well. So it means we have accounted for the entire population. How do we find the frequency of the genotype? So you're going to take a number of copies of particular genotype you have in the population and you're going to divide by the total, so the population size, and you're going to get your genotype frequency. We're going to take a look at some examples in the next couple of slides. But I want you to understand that the frequencies of the alleles and genotypes describe the population's genetic makeup, meaning genetic composition. 
allele frequency measures the variation itself within the population, but the genotype frequencies show how the variation is distributed among its members. All right, so let's take a look at a simple example here, how we actually derive um, this equation. So you can see if these are our eggs here that exist in the population. So we have two different varieties. So they contain allele either big A or little a. So this is our P and Q. And the same thing is for the sperm. So they can have P and Q. And then when these two gametes fuse, we're going to get P square. And this is where we get that P square. And then 2PQ, so this value and this, and then Q square right here. And then if we apply specific frequencies for specific alleles here, we have 0.6 and 0.4, we can actually see or use this modified Punnett square to figure out the probabilities of getting each genotype. So you can see these are the eggs and frequencies for big A, frequency for little a, and the sperm frequency for big A and little a, and these are the probabilities for particular genotypes that would exist in the population. So this accounts for 100% of the population. So to turn that into frequencies, these would be 3, 0 0.36, 0 0.48, 0 0.16, and that would equal to 1. All right, so let's take a look at our first example, allele and genotype frequencies. So suppose you've been given the entire population right in front of you. You have all the alleles, you have all the genotypes that are presented to you. So to find the allele frequencies, all you're going to have to do is literally count the alleles. So we have a total of alleles here, 20 of them in this population, and to find the frequency of allele A, we're going to count the big A. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's 11 out of 20. We'll have 0.55. And frequency for little a will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that is 9 out of 20. The frequency is 0.45. Notice those two frequencies add up to 1. So it means that's what we have in the gene pool. All of the alleles are counted for. And then how do we calculate the genotype? Remember, genotype always consists of two alleles. So we have 10 individuals here. How many of big A, big A we have? So we have 1, 2, 3. So 3 out of 10, 0.3. And then big A, little a, heterozygous. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 out of 10. And little a, little a, we've got two of these. So it'll be 0 0.2. And notice the genotype frequencies also add up to 1 because that represents the distribution of genotypes within the population. So we have all of them. So now what if you don't have the entire population presented to you in this way. What do you do then? So what if you only been given genotype frequencies? How could you find the allele frequencies based on that? This is how. You're going to, to find the frequency for big A, so that's your P. Um, you're going to take the frequency for homozygous dominant, which is 0.3, and then you're going to add half of what you have for frequency for heterozygous. Why half? Because if you look at this genotype, notice one allele is big A and the other one is little a. So it means you can only take half of this frequency for what you have here, because you only have one big A. So therefore, half of 0.5. And your frequency for dominant allele is going to be 0.55. To find the frequency for recessive allele, that's your Q, you would do the same, or you can do the shortcut because you know that all the alleles make up the entire gene pool. So you add them up. And now, since we have a value for dominant allele, 
we can easily find recessive allele frequency, which is going to be 0.45. So now here's another example. You have to answer this question. Is this population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? So you've been given genotypes, so you know the entire population, and uh, we have 200 individuals here. And then what you want to do to answer this question is follow these steps. All right, so the first thing, find the observed genotype frequencies. So what do we do? You're going to take each genotype that you have and divide by the total number of individuals you have in the population. So that gives you a frequency for the genotype. So this is your big A they gave frequency and then you do the same for the rest of them. Step two, you're going to find the observed allele frequencies. Okay. So the way we do this, because we can't actually manually count the alleles, this population is not presented into you to you this way. So what we have to do is we're going to take the frequency for big A, big A and then add half of the frequency of big A, little a, because remember, we only have one big A here, so we have to take half of it. This is important. So we're going to get 0.45 frequency for dominant allele, and then since we already know that the alleles add up in the population, Entire make up an entire gene pool, so we have 0.55 as recessive allele. Okay, so now step three. You're going to take these allele frequencies and you're going to find the expected genotype frequencies. So the way we do it is by we're going to plug these allele frequency values into the Hardy Weinberg equation. So here it is. We have 0.45 for big A, big A. Remember that's your P square. And then we have 2pq, and these are the values for the q square. So once we do the math, we're going to see 0.24 homozygous dominant genotype frequency, and then this is heterozygous, and this is homozygous recessive. So now the, the last thing, you're going to compare your expected values, the ones that we just got, so these are your expected, expected genotype frequencies under Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So we're going to compare these values to what we actually observe, what we calculated previously. So these are the values we observe. So we want to compare them and see if they are actually different. So you can see right away that homozygous dominant, they are different. Heterozygous, they are different. Homozygous recessive, they are also different. So if these values differ, these genotypic frequencies differ, that means what? That means this population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium because we see the deviation from expected values and that is the conclusion we're going to draw. We're going to say that no, this population is not in equilibrium, not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, this population is evolving. Okay, so here's another example, except this time notice we are not given any genotypes the only thing we see here is the percentage of a phenotype that we have, a specific phenotype within that population. So there's a population of mice and color black is dominant over color white. And all we know is that 45% of all mice in that population are white. So it's a recessive trait. So Notice that if we have big B, big B, the genotype, that means these mice right here would be black. But we do not know how these genotypes are distributed among these two groups. So what we know here is little b, little b, a white mice, and they make up 0.45 
frequency in that population, 45%. So that's your frequency. So how do we solve these problems? How do we actually answer the question, what is the percentage of mice in the population that are heterozygous, assuming it's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? So what you want to do here is a little bit different because obviously you can't count the alleles because they're not given to you. So you have to find it. You have to have some sort of starting point. So the best thing you can do here is come up with an estimate. And the way we do it is this. You're going to recognize the fact that little b, little b is basically your q square that you have in your Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium in that equation. So if we have q square, we need to find the individual q. That will be your frequency for the recessive allele. That's what we're going to begin. So notice we're going to do the square root of q square, and we're going to find individual q. So in this case, what we have here is 0.45, and if we do the square root on that, we're going to get 0.45. Six, seven. And then now that we know the Q, meaning we know the frequency of the recessive allele, so it means we can easily find the frequency of dominant allele because 1 minus Q equals P. So it means 1 minus 0.67, and you'll have the frequency of 0.33 for dominant allele. That's your P. So now all we have left here is answer the question. So what is the percentage of mice in the population that are heterozygous? So this right here represents your heterozygous organisms. So it means what we're going to do here is we're going to whoops, take 2PQ, so we have 2, and this is your P, and this is your Q, and you're going to get a frequency. And notice it's asking for a percentage, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So that represents 44%. And then the next question, number two, we have the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals, so it means we're looking for this, P square, so it means we're going to take the P, square and we're going to get the frequency and that's how we do it notice that whenever you've been given recessive phenotype you are going to do this square root all other times when the genotype frequencies are given to you or when you can actually count the alleles because the entire population is literally presented to you with all the genotypes, with all of the alleles, you're going to simply add them and divide by the total. But whenever you've been given a phenotype and nothing else, the best you can do here is start with recessive trait, and then because you know recessive traits only have recessive alleles. So it means we are going to do that square root to find a recessive allele frequency.